Ooh, I can't wait to show you these. Some of you may remember the Mobapad M6 Gemini. I reviewed these on the channel quite a while ago now, and I absolutely loved them. And these were out back in the day before there were other options with more features, basically. These aren't wireless, they only work when attached to the switch, but one key feature was the mechanical switches. So they basically use like a, a mouse switch in all the buttons, instead of like a silicone membrane like kind of button instead. But these had Alp sticks, so they're not Hall Effect or anything like that. But these were really, really cool. I like them a lot, and I really like the MobaPad stuff that I've seen as well. They do other controllers like the Chitu, which we've reviewed and an elite one as well there's there's loads of different stuff out there but now there's something new and this is one of them this is the mobapad m6s and yes i know what you're saying but what about the hd <laughs> we've got the hd and that's going to be in another video i'm going to do two separate videos so if you want to look at the hd which is like the the more pro version subscribe and wait for that yeah but yeah this is the M6S, and I want to show you this today. This is jam-packed full of features. It's got so much stuff, including mechanical buttons, as we'd expect. They're now Bluetooth as well, and they've got Hall Effect Sensing joysticks, and NFC, and Rumble, and Turbo, and a 15-hour battery life. Like, there's, there's so much stuff going on here. So let's just take a real quick look at the box. I mean, it's in Chinese, I'm guessing that's Chinese, but it does have English now as well. So we've got mechanical buttons, Hall Effect sticks, NFC, six axis gyro, well features, but yeah. It's got an app and on the back it says Hall Effect sticks, replaceable buttons, which means a D-pad, six axis features, again we've read that, mechanical buttons, NFC, macro programming, but it does have more as well. So let's open it up. So ready, boom, this is what they look like. And I really dig the colors. Like I like the fact that they've made the S version like colorful and yet yeah, my switch is already turning on these do have wake from sleep as well but these are really cute they're like a pastely color but more on this in a second let's just see what else we get inside the box one thing about the original mobile pads is that it's got swappable face plates so you can pull this off and then swap it. I always thought this would be cool for like modding. You could like Hydra dip this or custom artwork it. It would be very cool. But we get that again here. So inside here, we get different face plates. But you're gonna say, hang on Andy, they're the same color. And whilst they are the same color, they are reversed for one. So you've got purple on one side and then like this baby blue turquoise on the other. But that's not all either. It's not just an aesthetic change. It's actually functional as well. Hang on a minute. The gates are different. So this one is a circle, but this one is hexagonal. And that's the same with the opposing ones, right? So blue will make you go hexagonal for the gates of the joysticks. Whereas purple will make you go circular, right? And the idea behind this is for 2D games, really, for having precise movement, kind of trying to mimic a D-pad where you can have precise movement like this. I mean, loads of people love this kind of gate here for like Smash Bros and stuff because of the GameCube, you know? But you've got the option here. The only kind of sad thing is, is that if you want just circular, you're gonna have to go all purple. And if you want, you know, hexagonal gates, then you're gonna have to go all blue. But these are pretty easy to get off. You've got a tiny little nubbin on the top just there. See the nub? You just open that, pull it off. Oh yeah, I forgot about the D-pad. So <laughs> that springs off as well. And then you can get this and just ping. There we go. And now I've got a circular smooth gate and I've just taken a screenshot, great. But yeah, I've got a smooth circular gate instead of the hexagonal one. And whilst we're here, we might as well get the D-pad, which only fits in one way, I believe. And I'm just gonna push it around, there we go. Now, one thing I've found with D-pads that are changeable, I always used to find them getting stuck. And once I'd actually changed for a normal D-pad, I'm like, oh, I can't get it out. Well, they thought about this this time. There's actually a notch, so you can get your fingernail like in there and pry it out, which is gonna be easier when I take this off, right? Right? So you can actually like pull it, there we go, out, and then you can put this one in instead. Now this one, again, only goes in one way. Is it that way? No. I could just look, but there we go. Now I've got like this big dome like Xbox thing going on here, which I actually quite like. I like this. You've got face plates. Again, you could mod these yourself if you wanted different colors or whatever, but I really like the fact that these just come with it. Now actually looking at the Joy-Cons themselves, they've opted for a totally different design. They've redesigned it entirely now compared to the old one. So it is 
like less ergonomic i would say because these are massive and they've got big hoofing you know like big chunky boy grips but this one is still really comfortable because it's still massive it's got a massive grip on it i mean look at that that is just huge if i take off the joy con just here and then you look at this it is wildly <laughs> more ergonomic than the traditional Joy-Con. Like, look how beefy that is. It's like a proper beefcake. You know, I'm just thinking of Cartman right now. But, yeah, it is a big, big, chonky boy. And it's really comfortable. They are really comfortable. Even, like, just having them separate as standalone Joy-Cons. Because you can now, because they're actually Bluetooth, you know, wireless. This is comfortable to hold, whereas, you know, holding a Joy-Con like this, I mean, that that is not comfortable at all. It's, like, all horrible, right? But this, nice. Like that a lot. So, on this side, let's just go over some of the features or buttons, even. We've got the plus button, we've got our face buttons, we've got our joystick, we've got a home button, and then we've got a settings button. On the top, we've got R, we've got ZR, and then we've got this button, which is called M1 for like macro. And then it's got mobile pad just there. And it does sit in flush on the switch as well. And then we've got the other buttons on the side just here, the bumper buttons, right? And then on this side, we've got pretty much exactly the same. Minus, settings, screenshot, D-pad, joystick, L, Z, L, and then M2 over here. But straight up, I like the design of these. I think they look great. They feel nice in the hand independently. So if I'm actually just like playing these separately, this is nice. I have I must admit, I've not actually really tried it like this because these can be used as independent Joy-Cons, right? So you could use it like this. But to be fair, that's, that's not a bad feeling. Let's try the other side. It's not bad. You could definitely get away with this. If, if anything, it's actually more comfortable than these because this is so crampy and small, right? Like, getting your hands around this, it's nothing to hold on to. I find it incredibly difficult to play with these. Whereas this, it's got, like, some girth to it. Do you know what I mean? It's, like, big and chunky, and the joysticks feel absolutely amazing. <laughs> they really do. So, I'm digging that quite a lot. And, oh, man, I, I can't get over these joysticks. <laughs> I really can't. Anyway, let's crack on. So just to really quickly go over all the features in order, because I, I know I've already said them, but anyway. NFC, they're Bluetooth wireless. They have gyro motion control. They do have turbo. They have macro. They do have a button swap to these back macro puddles, paddles as well, not puddles. They are not puddles. They are definitely paddles. They've got mechanical switches. Now, these actually have liquid silicon, and they are saying that these have a lifespan of five to ten million clicks which apparently is compared to one to two million for like regular silicone switches so yeah okay um they would also have the hall effect and 15 hour battery including that app as well so let me go over the face buttons first because they're mechanical right and as were these now these ones are actually really nice i like these a lot but they are a little bit spongy but these They've definitely stepped it up a lot. These are miles better in terms of like feel. And if you don't know what a mechanical switch is, just think of a mouse, you know, where it actually goes, where it's got a mechanical switch that presses a button, essentially. That is the same as this, rather than like a silicon piece touching. Technical. <laughs> but let's have a listen. Do you hear that audible click? Now that's gonna be a turn off for some people, but these are faster to actuate, they're quicker to return, and they are, they're just more accurate, essentially, than standard buttons that you find on like the Joy-Cons or anything like that. I'm a big fan of mechanical switches. That's what I loved about the MOBA pad, and they've got them on everything as well, including the, the triggers and the bumpers as well. Now, the face buttons themselves are lovely. I, I'm not noticing any like major pre-travel or post-travel or anything like that. I'm just dying in my game over here. Um, but yeah, they, they feel very, very, very nice. I like them a lot, but... I do have a little bit of a gripe with the shoulder buttons and the bumpers as well. Now, the shoulder button, there's a lot of free travel. See this? I'm not even actuating it there. So you've got to press it a fair while before it then registers the click. See that? Click. So down, nothing, 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 nothing. Click. Now, post-travel, there's a little bit of post-travel. So when I 
actuate, it still goes past a little bit. So you've got to press it quite far before it actuates. And then there's a little bit of like sponginess afterwards. That's a shame little bit of a shame we'll see what it's like on the hd version in the next video but that is not as apparent on the zr so on the triggers there's a minor piece of pre-travel click and then a little bit of post travel, but it's really obvious on these. Now, if you're actually playing and you're committed to playing, right, and you wanna press that button and you press that button, it's gonna actuate, you're fine. If you play with a very light touch, you might be missing inputs there. I personally can overlook that because I really like these, but it's still maybe a downside. And of course, like I said, if you're really sensitive to noises, then clicking buttons, or if your partner is, clicking buttons might annoy them. Now the back paddles are not mechanical switches, at least not in feel. They certainly don't sound like it or feel like it. Not, nothing wrong with them, by the way. Like I, I have no issues with them. There's no like pre or post travel on those. They feel nice. Now the D-pad. Every Joy-Con alternative D-pad just kind of sucks, unfortunately. The retro flag is the best in my opinion, but that's like a dockable thing. It's not an independent Joy-Con, essentially. So how does the MobaPad M6S fare up? And whilst it's super clicky, it is beautiful. <laughs> it is so much nicer than 99% of the stuff that I test here. It's, it's so nice. It really, really is. I've been playing Mario Wonder with this and I like the dome. I like the Xbox style dome thing that they've got going on. But if you don't, then you just pull it off like that, really easy to do. You get your replacement just here and you just line it up so that that notch is on the left side, push down till it clicks. And now you've got this. And this is actually a really nice D-pad as well because it's really high up. This is raised high, it's quite flat. There's no like concave, but it rolls so nicely. And oh, I, just, I really like it. This is possibly, if not, the best D-pad on a Joy-Con alternative. I'm saying it! Okay, now let's look at those joysticks. So yes, we have Hall Effect Sense in joysticks now. Thank you, MobaPad. And I have to say, they are beautifully smooth. Like, they are really smooth. And I love the fact that they've got the anti-friction rings as well as the metal, like, anti-friction rings around the base of the joystick cap. You can see there's a metal ring. And then, do you see this white piece around here? That... Oh man, that is one of the smoothest joysticks I've ever felt. Like, it is so nice. It really, really is. Even with this, with the hexagonal thing going on, I love it. That that just feels lovely. It really, really does. Absolutely great. I really like the sticks. They are super smooth, very accurate. They're Hall Effect Sensing joysticks, so you're not going to get drift like you would with the traditional Joy-Cons. They are just perfect. You're going to get a long, long lifespan out of this. Pair that with the like five to 10 million click lifespan of the mechanical buttons. This Joy-Con set here could last you a long time. Now, let's just quickly give you a basic dead zone test with this. I've got the right stick, uh, you know, go in here and I'm just moving this. I can barely touch it and it's already actuating. I've not had any issues with any sticking or dead zone or anything like that with these. Perfect, absolutely love them. But you can adjust all that with the app. Now, I'm gonna take it right here to say, I couldn't get the app to work. It's only in Chinese, it's not on the Play Store. You will have to go and sideload it from the website. Now, I tried to do this and I, I just couldn't get it to run. So, and, and there was the same with on my PC. I've no idea why I've tried sorry <laughs> but you can go on there and you can adjust stuff you can create macros adjust the dead zone and all that kind of stuff on the app from what it looks like but it is all in chinese so i'd really love for mobapad to just launch it on the app store so you know in english so that we can use it because i'm sure there'll be loads of people including me that would love to actually test it out and if they ever do that i'll make a dedicated video all about the app and everything that they change. So yes, we do have gyro. I must admit I've not used it that much, but from what I have used of it, it seemed absolutely fine. It does have NFC as well. So these actually have NFC. So if you've got Amiibos and you regularly use them, you could do that with these, which is freaking awesome because most people just completely admit that. They're just like, nah, I don't need NFC, whatever. But this 
actually has NFC, which is brilliant. I really like that fact. And again, like I said, 15 hour battery on these, which is brilliant. So it's not going to be drawing power from the Switch. You just charge these up whilst they're on the rails. There's no USB ports or anything like that. I love how simple these are. I love the fact there's no RGB or any of that. It's just straight up. Here you go. Here's a load of functionality. Do you like how I've inadvertently made a blue background on this side and a purple on this side? That was not intentional, but... <laughs> so to show you the back paddles and everything, I've got to put these on the Switch. Now this is something I do want to say. They are stiff to get onto the Switch. You know, there's a very good amount of resistance there when you're sliding it on. Now I would say that they'll probably free up over time, but they are stiff. You know, they're not smooth like these are. It just, you've got to give it a bit of force there. And again, I've only been using these for like a week or so. So yeah, but look at that. Look how cool this is. I love it. I love this. I think that's brilliant. I think they look great. Let's just move some stuff out of the way. Here we go. I really like the look of these on here. And damn, do they feel good. Like they, they do. These feel beautiful. And yeah, I, I'm really liking this weird like half egg shape. And the fact that the joystick here on the right, this is something I need to mention, is so far over to the left. Look how rubbish this is, right? Look how far over that one is. It's it's ergonomic. I can actually sit and play this with an asymmetrical joystick layout and it feels nice. And that's my biggest gripe with the Switch. Why didn't they just do what the Steam Deck does and put the other stick up there? Because that would be beautiful to have two sticks up here. But no, they had to go with the asymmetrical design and it's really uncomfortable, but not on this. This is very, very comfortable. But now let me show you Turbo. Let's start with Turbo. So with Turbo, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna press Y, okay? Which is going to make um, the non prince of Persia just here attack. So Y is attack. So I'm gonna press the cog wheel and then Y. And then I'm gonna hold down Y and just see that light flashing there? That's saying, okay, Turbo's on. Uh oh, I'm gonna get owned. But yeah, Turbo is now on and I'm just gonna face this way now and kill this guy. So I can just hold this button down and he's just going for it. You know, I don't need to do anything. So this is actually a really good way of like accessibility. If you have issues with like repetitiveness, this is actually a good way of doing that, especially if you do it again. So if you press the cog and then Y again, and then press the button once, he's just gonna indefinitely just repeat that action, right? He's just gonna spam it, spam it, spam it. And you can change direction and stuff, obviously. Um, but yeah, he's just gonna keep going and going and going. If I press cog and Y again, it's now disabled. So now that's not there, you know? So he's no longer attacking. So that is turbo, right? But now we wanna do the back, you know, the back one just here. Now I'm actually gonna use jump because this is going to show the button swap. So with button swap, what I mean by button swap is so they actually act like the full button on the back. So with button swap, I'm going to press and hold the cog just here. And then under your finger, the, the light's gonna go on. I'm gonna tap Y and then I'm gonna press that back paddle, right? Oh, I've, I've done it to the other one. That's fine, we, we can use this, we can use this. So I can tap that back paddle now and now I'm gonna tap once attack once again and obviously I can press 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 and use it like a normal button okay but what if I hold it down because why if I hold here he's going to charge up and do like a super saiyan attack right now I'm hoping and I know the answer already but yeah if I do that on the back paddle will it do it let's try it yes yes it does so that in my opinion is what I call and deem true button swap because that actually acts like the full button has been swapped to the back as opposed to like just a, a macro record of that button input. Don't worry, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a good thing. Now to clear that, what we're gonna do is hold the cog button again until the thing lights up and then just press the back paddle and now it's unassigned. But you can do macro as well. So I'm gonna hold the cog until it lights up. I'm gonna go jump, 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 hit, 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 charge up. And again, charge up, there we go. And then, bow, and then I'm gonna press that back paddle. And now I'm gonna press it, let go. And now he's gonna do that whole action for me, right? So there we go. And that's gonna play once. Now what happens if I double press that back paddle, one, two, like so, that's gonna go round and yep, yeah, there we go. It's gonna keep going. And then look, it started all over again. So that whole action has now started again 
and we're going to go through and play it indefinitely essentially so to cancel that out just press the back button once or i think you can just press yeah you can press other actions and then you're right you know and then it just cancels that out so that is another feature but obviously because these are independent you can only do the right side to the right side and the left side to the left side so i'm going to press and hold this until it lights up, press that back pedal, and now it's cancelled out. Now this actually has standard rumble, just like normal rumble, one level of rumble, and it just goes on, right? That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but it does not have HD rumble, but you know what does? The HD version of this controller that we'll be looking at in the next video. <laughs> so if you want to see that one, obviously stick around. But there we have it. That is the MobaPad M6S. Now, I'm not going to go into pricing here on purpose because you, it's all over the place. You can buy them in America, I believe, for about $50. But you mainly get them here in the UK by importing them from AliExpress. And they're all over the place in price. So yeah i've no idea how much you'll find them for but these are the cheaper ones as opposed to the hd ones but i really like these the mechanical switches are perfect pretty much everything is perfect in this obviously these don't have hd rumble so they are the cheaper version but if you don't care for hd rumble then maybe this is the way to go if you want all the bells and whistles then you want to go for the hd version which we'll look at next the only downside here for me is the L and R buttons with how much travel there is, like the pre and post travel, is, there's a lot. But honestly, I can look past that because everything else is so good. You know, it really, really is. I love these a lot. And yeah, hopefully you like these too. Sorry it took ages for me to do this video. I've had these for weeks, but there we go. So what do you think of the Mobipad M6S? Let me know down in the comments. Whilst you're down there, like this video, subscribe, become a member, and check out mine and AJ's podcast over here where we talk about all things gaming. Check out another video from me down here. Maybe, maybe, maybe check out these old school ones down there. There'll be a video down there. It's an old video, but just go and watch it. Bye!